Hello, 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 and welcome to today's episode. This is your host, Beverly Fells Jones, and I am an author, speaker, and seminar leader. On this show, I talk about how to expand your world of thought, exploring the world of positive thinking, the law of attraction and consciousness from many points of view. I intend to share with you information that will enlighten and empower you in your life. I am here to encourage you to absolutely to think in the positive and show that miracles can happen. I truly believe you have been given the power of the word and thought to create the life that you desire. I want to thank all of you for listening today, and I'd like to thank all of you who are new to this channel, and I invite you to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Beverly Fells Jones. I'm also on Spoutable and on Facebook. Just look for my name and you will find me also commanding your life on Facebook. So today I am, I think, on the fifth address in Flores Kogel Chen's The Secret Door to Success book, and it's listed as a series of addresses given by Mrs. Chen. And today the title of that address is The Long Arm of God. And she begins with, The external God is thy refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms, Deuteronomy 33:27. In the Bible, the arm of God always symbolizes protection. The writers of the Bible knew the power of a symbol. It brings a picture which impresses the subconscious mind. They used the symbols of the rock, sheep, shepherds, vineyard, lamp, and hundreds of others. It would be interesting to know how many symbols are used in the Bible. The arm also symbolizes strength. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Is the enemy before thee. The negative thought forms which you have built up in your subconscious mind. A man's enemies are only those of his own household. The everlasting arms thrust out these enemy thoughts and destroy them. Have you ever felt the relief of getting out some negative thought form? Perhaps you have built up a thought form of resentment until you are always boiling with anger about something. You resent people you know, people you don't know, people in the past and people in the present. And you may be sure that the people in the future won't escape your wrath. All the organs of the body are affected by resentment. For when you resent, you resent with every organ of the body. You pay the penalty with rheumatism, arthritis, neuritis, and so on. For acid thoughts produce acid in the blood. All this trouble comes because you are fighting the battle, not leaving it to the long arm of God. I have given the following statement to many of my students. The long arm of God reaches out over people and conditions controlling this situation and protecting my interests. This brings a picture of a long arm symbolizing strength and protection. With the realization of the power of the long arm of God, you would no longer resist or resent. You would relax and let go. 
the enemy thoughts within you would be destroyed. Therefore, the adverse conditions would disappear. Spiritual development means the ability to stand still and stand aside and let infinite intelligence lift your burdens and fight your battles. When the burden of resentment is lifted, you experience a sense of relief. You have a friendly feeling for everyone and all the organs of your body begin to function properly. A clipping quoting Albert Edward Day, D.D. reads, That loving your enemies is good for our spiritual health is widely known and accepted. But that negation and poisonous emotions destroy physical health is a relatively new discovery. The problem of health is often an emotional one. Wrong emotions entertained and repeated are potent causes of illness. When the preacher talks about loving your enemies, the man on the street is apt to dismiss the idea as unendurable and pious. But the fact is, the preacher is telling you something which is one of the first laws of hygiene, as well as ethics. No man, even for his body's sake, can afford to indulge in hatred. I think I need to read that one again. No man, even for his body's sake, can afford to indulge in hatred. It is like repeated doses of poison. When you are urged to get rid of fear, you're not listening to a moonstruck idealist. Rather, you are hearing counsel that is as significant for health as advice about diet. We hear so much about a balanced diet, but without a balanced mind, you can't digest what you eat, calories or no calories. Non-resistance is an art. When acquired, the world is yours. So many people are trying to force situations. Your lasting good will never come through forcing personal will. Flee from the things which flee from thee. Seek nothing fortune seeketh thee. Behold his shadow on the floor. Behold him standing at the door. I do not know the author of these lines, Love Lock, the celebrated English athlete, was asked how to attain his speed and endurance in running. He replied, learn to relax. Let us attain this rest in action. He was most relaxed when running the fastest. Your big opportunity and big success usually <laughs> slides in when you least expect it. You have to let go long enough for the great law of attraction to operate. You never saw a worried and anxious magnet. It stands up straight and hasn't a care in the world because it knows the needles can't help jumping to it. The things we rightly desire come to pass when we have taken the clutch off. I say in my correspondence course, do not let your heart's desire become a heart's disease. You are completely demagnetized when you desire something too intensely. You worry, fear, and agonize. There is an occult law of indifference. None of these things move me. Your ships come in over a don't care sea. Many people in truth antagonize friends because they are too anxious for them to read the books and go to the lectures. They meet oppositions. A friend took my book, The Game of Life and How to Play It, to her brother's house to read. The young men of the family refused to read it. No nut stuff for them. One of these young men drives a taxi cab. One night he drove a taxi which belonged to another man. 
In going over the car, he found a book stuffed away somewhere. <laughs> it was the game of life and how to play it. The next day, he said to his aunt, I found Mrs. Shin's book in the taxi last night. I read it, and it's great. There's a lot of good reading in it. Why doesn't she write another book? Good works in roundabout ways. His wonders do perform. I meet unhappy people and a few grateful and contented people. A man said to me one day, I have a great deal to be thankful for. I have good health, enough money, and I'm still single. The 89th Psalm is very interesting, for we find that two individuals take part. The man who sings the psalm, for all psalms are songs or poems, and the Lord God of hosts answers him. It is a song of praise and thanksgiving, extolling the strong arm of God. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, thou hast a mighty arm. Strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Then the Lord of hosts replies, With whom my hand shall be established, mine arm also shall strengthen him. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. We only hear the words forevermore in the Bible and in fairy tales. In the absolute, man is outside of time and space. His good is from everlasting to everlasting. The fairy tales came down from the old Persian legends which were founded upon truth. Aladdin and his wonderful lamb is the outpicturing of the word. Aladdin rubbed the lamp and all his desires came to pass. Your word is your lamp. Let me repeat that. Your word is your lamp. The words and thoughts are a form of radioactivity and do not return void. A scientist has said, that words are clothed in light, you are continually reaping the fruits of your words. A friend in one of my meetings said that she had brought a man to my class who had been out of work for a year or more. I gave the statement, now is the appointed time. Today is the day of my amazing good fortune. So let me interject here. When she gives a statement, it is an affirmation. It is a prayer. So I want you to listen to this statement one more time, and I'll continue with her address. Now is the appointed time. Today is the day of my amazing good fortune. Feel that, that today is your day. Feel that today is the day of your amazing good fortune. Florence goes on to say, It clicked in his consciousness. Soon after, he was given a position which paid him $9,000 a year. Now remember, Florence was writing in 1925, 27, you know, when a weekly wage was a few dollars. So a woman told me that when I blessed the offering, I said that each offering would return a thousandfold. She had put a dollar in the collection. She said with great realization, that dollar is blessed and returns a thousand dollars. She received a thousand dollars a short time afterwards in the most unexpected way. Why do some people demonstrate this truth so much more quickly than others? It is because they have the ears that hear. Jesus Christ tells the parable of the man who sowed the seed, and it fell upon good ground. The seed is the word. 
I say, listen for the statement that clicks, the statement that gives you realization. That statement will bear fruit. The other day I went into a shop where I know the employer quite well. I had given one of his employees an affirmation card. I said to him jokingly, I wouldn't waste an affirmation card on you. You wouldn't use it. He replied, oh sure, give me one, I'll use it. The following week, I gave him a card. Before I left, he rushed up to me excitedly and said, I made that statement and two new customers walked in. It was, now is the appointed time. Today is the day of my amazing good fortune. So what she had, he said, she wasn't going to give him an affirmation card. He said, she said she wouldn't waste one on him because you wouldn't use it. And he said, oh sure, give me one and I'll use it. And the following week, I gave him a card. Before I left, he rushed up to me excitedly. I made that statement and two new customers walked in. Right? Now is the appointed time. Today is the day of my amazing good fortune. It had clicked. So many people use their words in exaggerated and reckless statements. I find a great deal of material for my talks in the beauty parlor. Imagine that. A young girl wanted a magazine to read. She called to the operator. Give me something terribly new and frightfully exciting. All she wanted was the latest moving picture magazine. You hear people say, I wish something terribly exciting would happen. They are inviting some unhappy but exciting experiences into their lives. Then they wonder why it happened. So do you understand what she's saying here? Give me something terribly new and frightfully exciting. Terrible. Frightfully. So I'm canceling those words in your ears and from my mouth because we don't want that. We want something this beautifully new and wonderfully exciting to appear in our lives. She goes on, there should be a chair of metaphysics in all colleges. Metaphysics is the wisdom of the ages. It is the ancient wisdom taught all through the centuries in India and Egypt and Greece. Hermes Trimescistus, if I'm pronouncing that right, was a great teacher of Egypt. His teachings were closely guarded and have come down to us over 10 centuries. He lived in Egypt in the days when the present race of men was in its infancy. But if you read the Kabbalion, K-A-B-A-L-I-O-N, Kabbalion, carefully, you will find that he taught just what we are teaching today. He said, that all mental states were accompanied by vibrations. You combined with what you vibrate to. So let us all now vibrate to success, happiness, and abundance. Now is the appointed time. Today is the day of my amazing good fortune. Yes, and remember that, and continue to say that particular affirmation every day, maybe multiple times a day, until she, we get a new one in the next chapter. Your words are your bond. Your words are like magic. As she said, even Aladdin's lamp is your mouth and your thoughts. And when you have negative thoughts about how you can't get something, how you won't get something, how you may be unlucky, cancel all of that. Cancel, cancel, cancel. And whenever you begin to think that way, cancel it and say, this is what I want. I want abundance. 
abundant. I have abundant health. I have abundant love. I have abundance all through my life. Happy abundance all through my life. And that is so. Again, thank you for being here and be sure to like and subscribe and to share because I'd love to grow this particular channel. So as you have believed, let it be done to you and it is so.